just a good old boy. Never meaning no harm. Beats all you never saw. Been in trouble with the law since the day they were born. Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. Well, it's been quite a while, but today we're going back to the comic! We're taking a look at issue 51, Thunder Machine. You may recall the last regular issue we looked at was number 50, and that dealt with the creation of Serpentor and the Battle of Springfield. This issue has almost nothing to do with that! Yeah, rather than deal with the Springfield aftermath straight away, the comic focuses on Zartan and Co, as you can clearly tell from the cover, which features the Dreadnoughts and the Thunder Machine. By the way, this cover has an error on it! You can see Monkey Wrench here, but that character isn't in this issue, and in fact wouldn't be introduced until issue 60, 9 freaking comics from now. The opening page picks up right where issue 50 left off, with the Dreadnoughts and Storm Shadow finding Zarana at Sartan's hideout. Inside, they also find Xandar, who's introduced here, as Buzzer doesn't notice him when he tries to sit down. Nobody ever notices me. You know, having a character whose main trait is that nobody notices him and that he's forgettable may not be the world's greatest marketing strategy to sell an action figure. More new toys are introduced as Serana leads them to Thrasher with his thunder machine and a swamp fire. By the way, the dialogue mentions that Thrasher has always been a dreadnought, he's just been away, so technically he's not a new character. Buzzer reveals Sartan has been captured by the Joes, but he knows where their headquarters is, so Zarana decides to break him out. It has more to do with gold that Sartan has stashed away, rather than sisterly love for him. They manage to intercept some top secret files, and if you look closely, the text is part of the actual file card that came with the Lady J figure. That's actually quite clever! They go to Fort Wadsworth, the army base that sits on top of the pit, G.I. Joe's secret headquarters, disguising the swamp fire as a G.I. Joe vehicle. Well, I say disguise, they just put a G.I. Joe sticker on it. Their cover story is Sandar is a special interrogator that's come to question Sartan. This gets them past Tollbooth, who's introduced in this issue without any fanfare, and Sergeant Slaughter. Sure enough, they get Sartan out and switch disguises to Scarlet and Slaughter on their way back up. I'll also note Storm Shadow has sneaked aboard the Swampfire and is now loose in the base. But that won't be relevant for this issue! As he won't appear again here, but will in the next comic. They make it all the way outside, where they meet yet more new toys. The Havoc and everybody's favorite redneck, Cross Country. Uh, his words, not mine. Their cover is blown as Cross Country just saw the real Scarlet, but they managed to take off anyway. The Joes at McGuire Airport, who've just returned from Springfield, sent the Awestriker and Mauler to intercept them. Not sure what two ground vehicles could do to track a flying swamp fire, but luckily for them, Zartan has a rendezvous with the rest of the Dreadnoughts. There, he chews out Buzzer for stealing his motorcycle. That happened way back in issue 35, by the way. Talk about playing the long game! Anyway, they split up, taking separate routes to their hideout. Meanwhile, Slaughter and Cross Country join the chase, though the other team is already set up for an ambush. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Zartan stole a communications module so they could listen in on the Joes, but this thing lets them be tracked. They catch the bad guys by surprise and manage to take out the swamp fire, but just as the Z-siblings are captured, the Thunder Machine shows up and takes out both the Mauler and the Awestriker, and then rescues them. You can tell why this issue is called Thunder Machine! Yeah, they really want to sell you this toy. With the ambush team out, it's up to the Havoc to stop them now. They play a game of chicken, with Thrasher coming up with an... Um, unique solution by driving past on two wheels. He then drives through an oil refinery, figuring the Joes won't dare shoot at them there. Also, the oil refinery company is called the very non-copyright infringing Axon. Best known for the Axon Valdez incident, right? They can't shake the Joes, so they get out of there. Them Duke boys is in a heap of trouble now! I'm not even kidding, this whole issue is basically a cross between the Dukes of Hazard and the A-Team. 
And I don't mean that this is a bad thing. Hell, they drive the Thunder Machine through a moving train. How awesome is that? Thanks to that stunt, by the time the train has passed, the Joes have lost sight of them. Slaughter asks a local yokel who sends them on their way. Only to reveal they've been bamboozled by Xandar, ending the comic. And that was Thunder Machine. And um, honestly, yeah, it was really, really good. I have, like, nothing to complain about, except maybe that error where they put Monkey Wrench on the cover. That said, I would have complained when they first released this issue, as it comes straight after the creation of Serpentor and the Battle of Springfield. Instead of continuing those stories, they focus on freeing Zartan, which I feel could have waited. As it is, it seems more like a filler issue. On the plus side, even though they crammed like seven new toys into this story, huh, maybe that's why it was filler, most of them got time to shine. Well, Tollbooth didn't, but Thrasher, Zorana and Cross Country got good characterization. It was a nice surprise that they didn't just focus on the vehicles, but gave their drivers the spotlight too. Uh, no comment on Xandar, since his whole shtick is supposed to be that nobody notices him. I didn't go deeper into Thrasher and Zorana's characters here, as I'm saving that for their reviews. Oh, and remember that I said they disguised the Swampfire by just putting a G.I. Joe logo on there? That's a pretty subtle way to advertise the toys. Hey kids, if you want to disguise your vehicles, just peel off and swap around some stickers. Overall, excellent, excellent issue. Go read it. Before I go, a service announcement. As the last panel of this comic says, the special mission series is now starting, so we'll be taking a look at those comics too from now on. I'll see you next time, everybody, and hey, why not like, share, and subscribe if that's your thing? Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. It's all you never saw, been in trouble with the law since the day they was born.